in this topic we are going to take a look at uh, what is the ex the situation of expatriate training in practice actually expatriate training ke kya aspects jo hain wo exist karte hain aur in real life expatriate training ke kya statistics hain aur kis tarah se expatriate training jo hai wo provide ki jati hai so let's take a look uh in the previous topics we discussed it's in uh, it several times that most of the international selections they are based on technical ability and why that happens this is something that we have discussed in the previous topics why selections are based on technical ability so when selections are based on technical ability that means that for people who are uh, uh, selected on the basis of technical ability already have that particular ability so training is not required for that particular aspect Uh, so usually literature on expatriate training is mostly concerned with pre departure training and that also uh, that is mostly targeted towards cultural awareness training program so when people are sent on international assignments most of the training that is focused on pre departure training particularly on cultural awareness training programs why do we need and why uh international training is mostly focused on intercultural training that's because there are huge cultural differences and uh, if people make cultural uh, wrong cultural choices if they respond to cultural situations incorrectly that can actually lead to a number of problems this is something that we had discussed in previous topics as well what are the costs of not being able to respond to cultural requirements Uh, so intercultural training is something which helps people cope with unexpected events in a new culture so uh, when you train people for intercultural uh, training uh, that helps them uh, to behave in a way and to respond in a way which is conversant which is familiar with that particular culture that they are going to however uh, when we look at uh, the data on um, how much training is provided to people who are going to international assignments we see that previously um, uh, 30 years ago 40 years ago that was a very um, a small amount of uh, uh, training which was provided to people who are going for international assignment so for example a study in 1982 found Uh, that us multinationals they are most reluctant to provide even the basic pre departure training to their expatriates uh, so uh, you can see from data that us multinationals only 32% of the multinationals they were providing training uh, to people uh, going for international assignments whereas it is a little bit different in european and japanese uh companies uh european companies provided most of the training uh was provided by european companies and that is 69% and japanese companies provided uh, training to 57% of their expatriates in 1997 uh a survey of european countries uh it showed that only 13% they always provide tra provided training to people going on expatriate uh, uh, to uh, people going on international assignments going as expatriate so only 13% always provided but this was something which was complemented by the fact that 60% provided for culturally challenging postings so where uh, they were sending people to culturally challenging locations uh, they uh, provided training 60% of the times so the data was a little bit uh, better in uh, terms of positions which were culturally challenging so this is the situation of one survey of 1982 and then of 1997 then when we look at data from the brookfield survey the brookfield global relocation survey that um, calculates the um, global trends uh, in international assignments on a various different locations and we have discussed statistics from various different aspects in previous topics as well so this data is about cross cultural training 
So in 2009 and 2011, you can see that cross-cultural training was available to 81% and 74% of the people. It was provided to them. But cross-cultural training was uh, provided uh, to employees only. You can see that there is an increasing trend of uh, cross-cultural training being provided to other uh, members of the family as well. So cross-cultural training pro being provided to employ only was happening uh, for only 7% of the times and 4% of the times in 2011. And uh, cross-cultural training was being provided to employ and spouse in 32% of the times and 46% of the times and to whole family in 56% times of and 49% of the times in 2009 and 2011 respectively. So from this data, you can see that uh, the situation has improved a lot uh, from previous uh, numbers to the current numbers and uh, uh, quite a lot of companies and uh, multinationals, they are providing cross-cultural training uh, to people who are going for international assignments and uh, something which is very much interesting and very much encouraging is that they also include the employees, uh, spouses, as well as their children for the cross-cultural training so that when people as a family, they are moving from one place to the other, uh, it's not just that the person who has been employed uh, needs to be trained for the new culture. People who are accompanying them, the spouse and the children, they are also going to be exposed to the new culture and they also need to be behaving in the right way and they also need to be aware of the cultural differences and therefore cultural training is provided to the whole of the family in maximum of the cases. So this is something which we see that the trend of expatriate training, particularly cross-cultural training, is increasing uh, these days. Another aspect of uh, um, uh, the statistics uh, that, that are related with expatriate training is that uh, the sector also makes a difference. Uh, so research shows that uh, provision of training varies across sectors. So all sectors, they do not provide training, cross-cultural training uh, in, in the same way. Uh, so the data and research shows that uh, chemical, pharmaceutical, healthcare and consumer firms, they are most generous in providing cross-cultural training, whereas IT firms, they are least generous in providing uh, cross-cultural training. So this is uh, the, this topic discussed about the various different aspects of expatriate training which is being provided, uh, what are the historical numbers, what are the recent numbers, and how these numbers are changing and in, uh, they are becoming more inclusive by including people from the rest of the family in the cross-cultural training of international assignees. And uh, then we also discussed that um, sector also plays a role in uh, how training is provided to people going for international assignments. Uh, so this uh, topic discussed about expatriate training aspects in practice.